Ever wonder why your multicam sequences in Premiere Pro aren't syncing the way that you would expect? Or why your audio is coming from the wrong source? Or even worse, you don't even have audio there to begin with. In this series of videos, I'm gonna be covering everything you need to know when it comes to syncing multicam footage by audio and some tips and tricks on how to edit multicam sequences. If that's what you came for, let's dive right into it. I have a camera in the front, I have a camera on the side, and I have two microphones. One is the Boom, the other is the Shure SM7B. And for those that are curious, my sequence settings are 4K and 23.976, but obviously this completely depends on what you're doing in your own production. Let me delete this and let's create our first multicam sequence. I've already highlighted my footage inside the project window. I'm going to right click, go to create multi-camera source sequence. Number one is if you are syncing by timecode, I have already created a tutorial on this and it covers everything that you would need to know to sync by timecode and create these kind of sequences. So if that's the case, check out the video. I think it'll be in one of these quarters and I'll also put it in the description. What we are syncing by in this tutorial is audio. Move source clips to process clips bin. This will move all of your clips that were synced into a process bin. If they weren't, they'll be out in the open. Right here is the bulk of what I'm going to talk about in this tutorial. By default, I believe this is camera one. And I'll break these down in a little bit, but I'm gonna give you a quick example just so you can see what a multicam sequence looks like. I'll hit okay here. I'm not gonna fast forward this at all. It just made. 10 sequences synced with all that audio. And I'm gonna click and drag this down onto my timeline. And lo and behold, we have some multi-camera sequences here on the timeline. Now I'm gonna give you five tips that I think are the most basic things that I you should know in order to hit the ground running with multi-camera sequences. If you look at my program monitor, we have two angles to choose from, but you're just not seeing them. So in order to switch between angles, you can do that three ways. The first one that I wanna tell you about is on your keyboard, just keyboard shortcuts. By default, these numbers up here on your keyboard will switch the angles of your camera. So if I sit here and I hit one or two, it will switch between the two angles. And if you have three, four, five, or six, seven, however many angles, when you hit those numbers, it will switch to that angle. One common issue some people may say is if I hit play here, <laughs> oh, I wait, can- I forgot to do a clap. I can switch between them, but those switches aren't seen on the sequence or the timeline. If I go over here to the wrench in the program monitor and go switch this to multi-camera, I can now switch between the two cameras. And what this allows me to do is if so I just I hit play like that, or I could go much easier to sync up a clap rather than a pop. And as I was clicking between the two angles, that was recorded down here on the timeline. Now there's one other way that you can switch between the camera angles and that's if you just double click, brings it up in your source monitor and you can choose between the two angles in your source monitor as well. The next thing you need to know about is how to see the clips inside the nested sequence or the multicam sequence. You can go up here and find whatever that sequence that you are wanting to look into and right click, go to open in timeline. So here we have a multicam sequence and it's the same as if you were looking at a nested sequence. One thing to note is because I chose camera one, the good audio from my recorder is featured here, whereas the scratch audio, let's say, from the cameras is muted. If I go back to my sequence, you can see that represented right here on the audio tracks. There's my boom, here's my Shure SM7B, and this is labeled incorrectly. Right here it says that it's A03 as channel three, but that's actually my Shure SM7B audio. It's just that it's split it into multiple mono, so this is the left channel and the right channel from my Shure SM7B, and I will address this later when we start to interpret or modify our audio channels before we set up a multicam sequence. So let me elaborate on this. The order in which you select your clips, as well as the type of clips you select, dictate how your multicam sequence is going to appear. And with the camera one sequence setting, it goes like this. If you have two or more video clips, the first clip you select is the audio you see in here. So in this example, I selected the A clip first, so that is the audio that shows up on A1, as well as the video on V1. 
If you open it up on the timeline, it will be on track 1. The second clip you select will be muted and placed on track 2. If you had a third clip, it would be muted on track 3, so on and so forth. Now, if we introduce an audio-only file into the multicam sync, like this Shure SM7B file right here, this audio will take precedence over any video clip audio, meaning your first selected video clip is on track V1, but the audio file is the Shure SM7B on top at A1 unmuted. This is the only file you will see on the main timeline, while the video clip audio files remain muted inside the nested multicam sequence. And let me reiterate and stress here that I switched the order of how I selected my video clips up. Instead of hitting A first, I'm selecting B first. So that is what shows up on the timeline initially. And then when I opened it up, B is on V1 and A2, and then A is on V2 and A3. If you have multiple audio only files, it will show all of those on the timeline and mute the camera audio. Moving on to this all camera sequence setting, you don't have to worry about that as much because Premiere is going to bring all of the audio sources down into the timeline. And then the last one is switch audio. This is the most issue driven one. Just know that when you're playing back your footage, if you switch a camera, it will switch to that audio source that is matched with that camera. There's a lot of other settings that you could utilize with this that could mess things up, and I'll save that for later. Just know that camera, one source, all cameras, all sources, switch audio, switches the audio when you switch your angle. Another thing that you should know is how to flatten your material. And if I go here and highlight this take that we've been looking at, right click and go to multi-camera, we can flatten this. All of the angles that you decided on are now there as edits inside the timeline. The next big thing that you need to know about is this icon over here, insert and overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips. I'm gonna take those same multi-cam sequences that we made and I'm going to go to the hamburger menu for the sequence itself, click that and go down to an option labeled multi-camera follows nest setting. Turn that on. And then I'm going to go over here and unclick insert and overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips. And once I do that, I can click and drag this in as individual clips instead of nests. This technique can help save you so much time when syncing audio, especially when you're trying to organize files. For example, if I make this full screen and I'm gonna zoom here on this first take, go up to my hamburger menu and go to show audio time units. And now we can really zoom in and make sure that my audio takes line up to my video takes like that. And I could do that for each take here quickly on the timeline. The other thing I like to do is make a unified beginning and ending to each take. So there's no dead space. I could quickly go through and do that with each take. And now instead of flattening, we could create a multicam sequence here on the timeline. So if I highlight all of these clips, including the audio, right click and go to nest, because this is take one, I'm going to label this take one, but we can also go here, right click this and go to multi-camera and enable. And now this clip is the same as any other multi-cam sequence. Another thing that helps with this setting is a situation like this, where I have one camera and one audio source. So I'm gonna right click, do exactly what I did before, create multi-cam sequence, audio track, camera one, automatic, hit okay. And now imagine if you had a whole day's worth of footage where somebody was having a microphone on them and they were going into a recorder of some sort while you were recording scratch audio on your camera and I just synced all of that stuff and I can bring that down onto the timeline like this. Now, right now it looks like clips, but if I were to undo that and, uh, turn on in certain overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips, bring that back on, and now it looks like a multi-cam sequence, even though there's only one camera in there and it brought the good audio. Now, obviously I haven't covered everything that there is to know about multi-cam sequencing in Premiere Pro, but my aim for this part one video is that hopefully you have enough knowledge about this workflow where you can hit the ground running when you open up the software. And if that's the case, leave that thumbs up. And if you wanna keep learning, Go ahead and click on the next video because it's probably on the screen or if it hasn't been released yet, I'm just sitting here talking to you and it's a random video that's on the screen. <laughs>
<laughs> Until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.